Is our observable universe an interior of a black hole? Yeah, you heard me right. There is a recent discovery that signify that our universe might be inside a black hole. In our universe, there is always a limit to what we can see. For example, currently, with our latest powerful telescopes and other technologies, we can only see so far up to 93 billion light years in distance. Imagine this. Suppose our Earth is the center of a sphere and, from our reference point, all the light we receive from other parts of the universe signifies the distance to which what is the farthest light had covered to reach the center. From that, we got that the current observable universe is around 93 billion light years. One light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. Light travels at the speed of 0.3 billion meters per second in the vacuum of space. So, light traveling for a year would be an astrophysical number, which is around 9.5 quadrillion meters per year. So, thinking about what 1 billion light years would be is very confusing and hard to visualize. Our nearest neighbor galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, is 2.537 million light years. So, yeah, it's very hard to visualize and at the same time amazing to know how truly big our universe is. Beyond that, it's just dark. But that's just for now, not might be the case in the future. I will explain. But for now, let's first understand what a black hole is. The best simple explanation is that a black hole has a lot of mass, packed into a very tiny volume that not even light can come out after entering, and at its center is called a point of singularity. For further understanding, we need some basic understanding of what space is. What is space? Is space a volume, and if so, how do we dimension it? We assume space is like a three-dimensional background grid, where one can explain the physical phenomena, taking place spatially to arrive at a logic and a sense of perspective. Space is only to represent phenomena and has no underlying influences upon phenomena or whatsoever. This was an ongoing perspective for many decades, until one man came along to disapprove, and that man was none other than Sir Albert Einstein. Before that, Sir Isaac Newton tried to formulate the phenomena gravity by understanding the force that takes place. In an essay of his, he said that, I have not as yet been able to discover the reason for these properties of gravity from phenomena, and I do not feign hypothesis. In simple terms, his equations work really well, but he has no idea why it works. What Sir Albert Einstein showed is that there's a wild way to think about how gravity emerges. He says, gravity comes into existence. The way that the force of gravity arises is due to the presence of a certain amount of stuff within a certain volume of space that actually warps and bends the fabric of space-time itself. So in that sense, space is actually something malleable. It's bendable. For better understanding, here is an illustration. Wait a minute, there's one more thing. Space doesn't just bend, it also flows too. Yeah, you heard me right. Let's understand first this. The fastest speed any material in space can go is the speed of light. Only subatomic particles and photons of a very tiny mass, and no mass respectively, can travel up to the speed of light, which is around 300 million meters per second. But when it comes to any material of comparable mass from the macro world, it will take an unfathomable, huge amount of energy to get to the speed of light. Because as a significant mass moves in space, increasing its speed to reach up to the limit, the mass surprisingly increases, requiring more fuel to reach the speed, but also from there. Increasing speed using more fuel also increases the mass again, and this goes on and goes on, becoming impossible to reach the speed of light. So yeah, we can't reach the speed of light. That is the thing. See if something is always going to be prohibited to move, with at most a limiting speed, and if there is some other thing that just violates it, then the other thing has that capability of influencing the fabric of space that no other material can do. That other thing, or the weird odd one, is none other than a black hole. Why can't light travel back from the black hole after it entered the black hole? The photons travel at nearly the speed of light, and it has no mass, so what stops it from coming back from the black hole? We heard that space does bend in the fabric of space-time, but any finite curvature, however large or small, 
light can go down and come back out of a curvature of space. So what's so peculiar about black hole that has the ability to stop the fastest thing in the universe, which is photons? The answer is black hole not only bends space, but also makes space flow too, to the inside of a black hole. If the space can go beyond the speed of light, then that means space flows and takes whatever it occupies along with it. Black hole bends space more as you reach up to the event horizon. Also, as you reach the event horizon, space starts to flow through inside the black hole of speed, beyond the speed of light, such that space stretches itself and bends, space with infinite curvature of radius. Basically, a black hole is like a sinkhole or a whirlpool, where whatever is within the reach of it grabs and sucks it down the bottom. If a fish gets too close to its bottleneck, then the water flow inside is at a great speed, such that the fish can't get out, whatever that fish's top speed. It's more like trying to swim against the river's flow, but you know, won't be successful. Therefore, if you pack a lot of mass, which is more you can imagine under a tiny, small volume, you can actually have space that's bending in the beginning and after, flowing towards the center of that volume. Here's a quick tip summary. A black hole has a lot of mass packed into a tiny small volume where it bends the fabric of space-time, and then at every time we near the event horizon, space starts to flow inside the center of mass. Black hole, infinite density, infinite curvature of space. We can calculate the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole. The Schwarzschild radius is the radius of a black hole, from the event horizon to the singularity point. Here is the formula for finding the radius. Radius is equal to two times the gravitational constant times the mass of the object whole divided by square of speed of light. Now let's see what all things we can theoretically do to create a black hole. Can we create a black hole out of the proton? Let's see, the mass of a photon is around 1.67 into 10 raised to 27 kilograms. We know the value of C, which is the speed of light. We know the gravitational constant G. From calculation, we get a radius of approx 2.5 into 10 times negative 54, which is a lot. Smaller, and that's good news, because in quantum mechanics, the small length that is allowed to exist is called the Planck's length, which is 10th raised to minus 35. So yeah, a proton cannot theoretically become a black hole. What about Earth? Yes, the radius of a black hole, having Earth mass, is around 8 centimeters, which is the size of a normal blueberry. If you thought about a human being too, it is possible. And that radius would be about 10th raised to negative 25. Let's think of something peculiar, big and an odd one. What about the observable universe? The observable universe is 93 billion light years in diameter. Is it possible to calculate the mass of the universe? Though the universe is so big, scientists cleverly can estimate the mass of the universe, including the missing masses, like dark matter, that we can't see or interact with, and so on. They estimate it to be around 1054 kg, which is immense. Now, if you apply the formula, then you will get a Schwarzschild diameter of approximately 300 billion light years. Wait a minute. The Schwarzschild diameter of a universal black hole is greater than the observable universe? Damn. Wow, that's unexpected. Let's think. The astrophysical numbers are subject to uncertainties, and if you decided to reduce by half that which is around 5 times 10th raised to 53 kJ, and there is no point in increasing the mass since this would only increase the Schwarzschild diameter. Then, Schwarzschild diameter would be approximately 157 billion light years. Still reducing again won't help since we have collected so far data from the late 90s from telescopes and satellites that reducing by another half of the mass would be incorrect, as you know that there are a lot of mass which haven't found yet, but we know it's there, and scientists call it dark matter. Since we reduced half of the previous mass of the universe, and still got the radius larger, does that mean? Do we live in an enormous black hole? Wait a minute. 
since we have gone so far into black hole, we left one more important piece of information to discuss that there are different types of black holes. Yeah, being a black hole is so odd and unique, and still there are some differences when it comes to different types of black holes. A theoretically black hole is usually formed when a star of mass more than three times that of the sun's masses totally runs off nuclear fuel inside the core to counter the forces of the star's gravity itself, leading to the collapse of a star. If a star having a threshold of mass, which is around, three solar masses collapses, then most likely they form into dense neutron stars. There are two types of black holes. So far we know that they exist out there. One is stellar black holes, and the second one is supermassive black holes. Stellar black holes are formed when a star with more than eight times the sun's mass runs out of fuel. Its core collapses, rebounds, and explodes into a supernova. They can range from greater than eight to a few hundreds of solar masses. Almost every large galaxy, including our Milky Way, has a supermassive black hole at its center. These monster objects have hundreds of thousands to billions of times the sun's mass, although some scientists place the lower boundary at tens of thousands. The whole categorization of black holes is still going around because of the lack of a continuous number of black holes of the mass in the intermediate range. There are other types of black holes, like the intermediate and primordial black holes, but still to this day they are only theoretical and not confirmed that they exist. Also recently, we found some significant likely candidates of an intermediate black hole, which is interesting. Now, getting back to the real deal, is our observable universe an interior of a black hole? So you are now deciding to find out what's inside of a black hole. If you decided to go inside a stellar black hole, then sure, you would be killed and spaghettified, which means you would be compressed and stretched so violently and will be then ripped apart by the gravitational forces. But it turns out that if the black hole is large enough like a supermassive black hole, then you would be okay inside the black hole. The force gradient would be small compared to the stellar ones, though that doesn't mean you won't feel the gravitational forces. It would be uncomfortable, but will be okay. The thing is, you would make it to the other side, knowing that you won't be able to go back to share the journey experiences and the data collected to check out this theory. But black holes are more than astrophysical oddities. There is a black hole behind the Cygnus X1 star that has a swirling disk of squeezed drawn materials from the blue giant star. This is the first black hole to confirm the existence of black holes to humanity. They were able to confirm due to the emission of strong X rays and gamma rays, which is unusual and has no detectable emission spectrum of a star. Getting back to the topic, Black hole or the event horizon grows as it takes more stuff from the star and eats it. But also, if you are on the inside, the event horizon would be expanding. Isn't it similar to the expansion of our current observable universe? We know for sure there's boundary to what we can see and at the same. For a person inside a black hole would be seeing the expansion of the event horizon as it grows by consuming star materials and so on. Also, you cannot reach the event horizon and the outside too from the inside, which is also similar to our universe, as it is expanding more than the speed of light. Scientists and astrophysicists says, it is mathematically possible that for us and the entire universe to be living inside a black hole. What does it say about the current known black holes in our universe? Is it leading to another universe? And if so, doesn't that mean there are a larger number of worlds or universes that are interconnected and barriered by the event horizon. And if so, isn't the death of a star leading to the birth of another universe inside a black hole? We know that from nature, the beginning and the end are intertwined and are in a continuous, unstoppable cycle. I believe we are yet to uncover the truth of this reality. But for now, let's keep exploring ideas like these. The truth is closer than ever. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more ideas that are out of normal thinking and challenging us to think more. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.